about 31, let's take a look at example five. We wanna find all of our zeros. So I'm gonna do this the whole way through. I'm gonna make a list of all possible rational zeros. Then I'm gonna hop over to my calculator so I can get some starting points. And then I'm gonna break this whole thing down. Now I should have four zeros by the time I'm done because I have a degree four polynomial. All right, so if we were gonna make a list of all possible rational zeros, we wanna look at our constant and then our lead coefficient. So P is always the factors of that constant. So in this case, it's the factors of 12, which would give me, I, all right, one, two, three, oops, plus or minus four, plus or minus six, yikes, and plus or minus 12. There's a lot of them. And Q is always the factors of your lead coefficient. So in this case, it's two. And that's nice, there's only two factors, two integer factors of that. All right, so if I wanna generate my list of possible rational zeros, all right, possible rational zeros, let's start generating our list. We take every P and divide it by Q. So here's my first P, one, one over one, one. One over two, one half. All right, next P is two, two over one, two. Two over two is one, I already have that in my list. Let me go to three. Three over one, uh, three. Three over two, three halves. Okay, here we go, four, four over one, four. Four over two, uh, two, I already have that in my list. Okay, I don't need two commas here. All right, um, what are we up to, six? Six over one, six. Six over two is three, I already have it. All right, 12 over one is plus or minus 12. 12 over two, six, I already have it. Okay, whew, how many possible zeros, possible rationals do we have? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Yikes. So if I didn't have technology, I have a list of 16 possible rational zeros. And if you didn't have your graphing calculator, it would be a guess and check situation. You would try one and you would use synthetic division and see if you got a zero. If that didn't work, you'd go to negative one. Um, if that didn't work, maybe go to 12 and then negative 12. And then I would try all the whole numbers like six and negative six, four and negative four, three and negative three. I mean, it, it could take you a while, which is why it's good to get your starting point from your calculator, keeping in mind we have a list here. But let's see what might play out on that list. So let me go write my original function. So we had 2x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 15x squared plus 32x minus 12. Let me make sure I don't have a typo. 2x to the fourth. No, that's looking good. Okay. I'm going to hit zoom six, and let's see what we have. Now, this is a quartic with a positive lead coefficient, so I should see a W, or something close to a W, right? Okay, so I can't see this first minimum here, but I can see some stuff. Okay, now, it looks like I might just be touching the x-axis here. I'm not sure. So I, I might have a multiplicity of two, this zero looks like it's in between zero and one, but this one looks like it's on a whole number. That one to me looks like negative three. So let me try and find this out. If I go negative one, negative two, negative three. Let's do second calc one. Let's plug in negative three. And sure enough, I get a zero back out. Now, I also see a zero between um, zero and one, and then I think it's hitting right there on the x-axis at two, but we'll, we'll keep that in mind in just a moment, okay? So the first one I found was negative three. That is in my list, so let's go ahead and do negative three. I've got descending powers of x. No, there was no skipped power, so I can just write these coefficients. Now, I know I get a zero, all right? I already figured that out from the calculator. It said it was an x-intercept. So we get two, negative six, negative nine, 27, 12, negative 36, this is negative four, positive 12, zero. Okay, 
great, I'm through one iteration. So at this point, I know f of x, if negative 3 is a 0, x plus 3 is a factor. I started with a quartic. I should be down 1 degree, so I have 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 12x minus 4. All right, I'm not quite done because this isn't a quadratic. Once it's down to a quadratic, all, I, I, all I'll have to do is either factor or complete a square quadratic formula, but I'm not there yet. This is a cubic. So let me go to my function, my graph again, and I think there's a zero here at two. Now you need to be a little careful. Because it looks like it's touching the x-axis, you can't really use that, that zero option. Your calculator freaks out when it has zeros that touch the x-axis. And let me show you what I mean. Let me get blinky all the way over. So there we go. So you can see that the blinky is clearly on the left side. And then if I move it to the right, it's clearly on the right side. And I can hit enter through guess. And then you're going to see my calculator say no sign change. Oh, just kidding. Apparently your calculator can do it now. Oh, maybe the TI-84s can do it. In my older ones, this might be one of the newer calculators, um, I've had them freak out um, when they don't cross the x-axis, but, but it actually is working. It's showing that if you plug two in, you can get zero back out. If you have one of the older calculators that freaks out and you see error, no sign change, that's fine. The other way you could verify it is you could hit second calc and you can plug in a value and plug in two. And when you see it zeroes out, you're like, all right, that's my other zero. All right, so with that, I'm gonna put two here, and then I'm gonna take these coefficients, right, from my cubic now. So two, negative nine, 12, negative four, and I'm gonna, no, I don't need to scooch it up. We have enough room, okay? Now this has to be zero. I know it, I checked it on the calculator. So two comes down, four, negative five, negative 10, two, four, and sure enough, zero. All right, so with that, we know f of x. We already had our x plus three. I'm now gonna pick up x minus two, and then I have two x squared minus five x plus two. All right, so let's go up here and see what we can break down. At least it's a quadratic at this point. So f of x, we had x plus three, x minus two, and then 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. All right, so again, you could use the quadratic formula, you could factor, you could complete the square. I'm gonna try and factor this one. All right, the only things that multiply to 2x squared are 2x and x, and then the only thing that multiplies to two is two and one, and I'm gonna put the one here and the two here because outer is four x, inner is x. If these are both negative, that should work, and if I do a quick little check on the last, negative one times negative two is positive two, so that's working. So here's my factored polynomial, all right? But that's not the actual question I was asked. I was asked to find all the zeros, so the zeros, if I use the zero product property, I would get negative three, zero, I would get two, zero, I would get one half, zero, and then I would also, oh, we can see it, I get another two, zero. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed it, but x minus two, I didn't notice it initially, x minus two had a multiplicity of two. Let me actually rewrite this, just so we can see it. Right, so f of x was x plus 3 times 2x minus 1. It was times x minus 2 squared. And that makes sense because graphically we saw it touch the x-axis at x equaling 2. It did not cross the x-axis, so that lines up with its multiplicity being even. Let me erase that. And then say, again, even though I wasn't asked, here is the factored form of my polynomial and my zeros. I only have three of them. I have negative three, zero, one half, zero, and then two, zero. And I have, again, a, a repeated zero. It has a multiplicity of two, and I don't need to list it twice. 
And that lines up with my graph, right? I see my x-intercept at negative three, I see it at one half, and I see it at two. And just to verify one half, I could hit second trace, I could hit option one, plug in one half, and sure enough, there's my function with uh, a y value of zero. Okay, so you can see how much fun and how much work this is just to find these zeros, right? It takes a lot of algebra, a lot of synthetic division, and this is when all of our zeros, our x-intercepts were nice, real, and rational numbers. So we're gonna head over to example six, and we're gonna see what happens when you have complex zeros. All right, so they're not actually gonna show up on your graph anywhere, but they are hanging out as zeros. All right, so with that, we're gonna head on over to example six, and I will see you in a bit. Bye.